Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to um, it's taking me a minute to think. <laughs> I'm going to give a shout out to Missy Patty because look at my beautiful earrings that I got from her. These are um, what are they called? Um, Paparazzi. You see how my mind works, and you wonder how I could, how I could even function on that television show. And they had the hardest time with me, but that's just how I am. Anyway, thanks to Mrs. E. Patty because I've been buying some paparazzi from her. But now these are the earrings. Most everything you buy are necklaces, and they have little sets, and they have these tiny little earrings. But sometimes she has extra earrings. They're bigger and more, you know, that that are prettier. Oh my Lord, I love these things. I wish I had them in every color, Missy. So you need to order some of these and put more of these on your little show. I usually share uh, that. I don't know if you've ever bought paparazzi or not. I thought it was kind of crazy and I'd never done it. And then a few months ago, and I'm not saying this for anything except that I just have found that I like it. A few months ago, I just really liked the way she talked. She sounded just like me. And so it caught my attention and um, she lives in Alabama, and she can't live that far from us because she sounds just like us. And I just love listening to her talk and watching her little show. And I have bought quite a bit of jewelry from her, but everything's five dollars. And then it only she 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 sends it to you, and it only costs five dollars to uh, send however many pieces you want to get. So I've started buying some stuff from her, and I really really like it. So I need some stuff to match this Missy that's that green. It's like that, um, I've, it's like a moonstone, I believe, and it's in the green. So uh, you need to put some of that on your show. And y'all, next time I share it, if y'all want to hop on and, and watch some of her stuff, you should. Now, um, I know some of you have kin folks that sell it, but I've already fell in love with Missy, so I'm not changing my paparazzi person um, I guess the Lord just laid it on my heart one night to listen to it because I really enjoy watching her. Anyway, tonight our Bible study is on the Holy Spirit, and I'm excited about that. And I'm yelling, and I got my earpiece in. Lord have mercy. I'm just going to have to get used to me. I'm just old and senile, and I don't remember nothing. And I know y'all don't think I'm old because I'm 50 this year. But, um, you know, chemo ages you 10 years, and I truly believe it. Now, I'm about to show you something that some of you are going to think that's really ugly, and then I'm going to some of y'all might think it's pretty cool. And um, considering a lot of y'all might not think it's pretty at all, but if you go outside this time of year, you know you hear the katydids. And if you live down here, and I'm not sure where all they are, I did a little ex I did a little video on them one time. It's on Real Southern Woman. If you just scroll, you know, into the past videos, then you can watch about the Katie Dids and how they sing and how they, um, I think it, you know, it, it describes several things about them that are really very interesting. Anyway, I go outside the other night to walk the dogs and I walk them out on the back porch and there's one flying and I'm like, and they're big y'all. And so I wasn't that crazy about it getting close to me when it was alive. I'll just go ahead and tell you because I don't like anything that has legs that's going to land on me, period. Okay. But the next day I got up and it was laying there on the porch dead. And I don't think they have a long lifespan. Like I said, I'd have to go back and watch the video again because I'm not a Katie Dead expert. But when I went out there, she was laying down, y'all, on the porch. And I picked her up and I brought her in the house and I showed her to the kids. But I want y'all to see her because I want you to see, even if she is a bug, now, I'm a country girl, so things like this don't bother me. But even if she's a bug, she's a very interesting creature that our Lord made, okay? And am I a animal activist? Absolutely not. I believe in eating meat, and I believe that dogs are dogs, and, and I don't think they have a soul like some people do. Uh, but I still love his creatures, okay? I don't love them enough that I would let a dog ruin my house before I get rid of it, I'll tell you that, but I do love them. So I want you to see this Katie did, and what I want you to look at her for is her wings. 
I was looking at her wings when I showed her to May, and it is absolutely amazing the things that our God made that we never even see and we never pay attention to. And I mean, he's an extraordinary God, a God like no other God, you know, just like it says in the Bible. And, but I want to pick this up and I want you to see these wings and I'm hoping that y'all can get a glimmer of how they shine, okay? I don't know if y'all will be able to or not, but I'm going to try. I may just turn the camera around so that y'all can see it better, okay? So, um, here she is. And there's her wings. And they actually, there they go. See how they shimmer? I'm trying to get it to focus. See how they shimmer? Is that not the coolest thing ever? But here she is, and she's no longer with us, but I have her because I thought she was very interesting. They look like really big uh, horse flies. I mean, that's what they look like, but their wings are actually longer than a horse flies. So, um, I'm not sure if y'all are interested in that, but I just think it's neat to look at God's creatures. And I told y'all the other night that I would get out my snake and show him to you, and I never did. So, I might do that tonight, too, because... Um, let me say this. Tonight's lesson is on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. And so many, um, I know different people believe different ways about the Holy Spirit. But may I say that when you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside you immediately. And it never really leaves you ever. Now you can quench it so that it doesn't really talk to you very much or communicate you can stop communicating with it and so it may not speak to you um it really speaks to you the only way i know how to describe it is through your subconscious okay so it's not like i know some people believe like they did in acts where the holy spirit would just come down and then just and dwell in somebody and just you know like they just have the holy spirit all of a sudden and they have to be in this spiritual moment to get it. And then it goes away. And that's not how it works. And we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit tonight because that's what our Bible study is about. And I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. And um, so y'all just, it's, it's a lot more simple than that. But I have been led to do things through the Holy Spirit. I know it was the Holy Spirit. Now, did I hear an audible voice? Absolutely not. Never have I heard an audible voice. Um, I don't think God shows himself like that anymore like he did in the Old Testament. But I have subconsciously felt like I needed to do things. Just like on July the 1st this year, I decided that that was going to be the day that I put Mama's room together. And I also decided it was going to be the day that I started this Bible study back. And lo and behold, when I open up the book, it's about having hope when someone dies, a loved one dies. So... Nobody can convince me otherwise that that wasn't the Holy Spirit guiding me. Um, does it mean I'm real spiritual? No, but sometimes God does use the Holy Spirit um, to speak to us and guide us to do things that we need to do that we don't even know about. So our lesson today is the Helper. And this says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another Helper. That he may be with you forever. Now, if Jesus says that this helper is going to be with you forever, then why would you ever think that the Holy Spirit would come and visit you and leave? He says you're going to have it forever. Now, we're going to read some scripture straight out of the horse's mouth. And then we're going to read our Bible study. So I want you to listen, really listen. Open your ears, open your hearts, and listen to what the Bible says. This is Christ speaking, telling about the Holy Spirit, okay? It says... This is coming out of John chapter 14. 
okay? And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. It says, a little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. And that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. So he plainly says, y'all, that he's sending us a helper. Uh, he's going to abide with us forever. It's going to be the spirit of truth. It says the world cannot receive this spirit of truth, this helper, because they do not see him nor will they know him. But it says you will know him and he will dwell with you and he will be in you. In you, y'all. He don't just say he's going to come and visit us or he'll send us somebody when we need him like an angel, like some people think. No, he's sending his children, his bride, his church, a helper. And we just read two nights ago that he said that he was going to go be with his father and that in his house were many mansions. And if it were not so, he would have told us. He told us he was going to prepare a place for us that so that where he is, we would be able to be with him. And now not only is he doing that, but he's sending a helper to help us while we're here. He's an amazing God. And the Holy Spirit is real, real as rain, or more real. And um, I'm sure we all have stories about the Holy Spirit and things that's happened in our lives to where the Holy Spirit might say, hey, you know, this person down the road needs something, or this person needs $100, give them $100, or, you know, this week in church, you know, I think you ought to give to a missionary, or Whatever it is, if the Holy Spirit lays it on your heart to send somebody a card, I know Donna Smith watches me, and um, I don't know what it is about Donna Smith, but I will say I know she's a Christian, and she told me her salvation story. I got to meet her in person down in Gulf Shores, and she was a Catholic, and she was actually, um, um, her and her husband both got saved um, by going to a Bible study, and they started reading the Bible, and so she told me, uh, um, you know, I know she's my sister in Christ. And when she sends me a card, it is so crazy because it's sometimes it's when we haven't even been to the mailbox like we would normally be, like we run off to Florida and then we come home. But every single time I get one of her cards, it's like perfect timing for me. And I know Pat curl and she knows who she is and I don't know if I'm saying your name right but I know a lot of y'all send me cards and I, I don't want to hurt your feelings or anything but there's some people that seem like when they send me a card um it's just always spot on you know what I mean it's just pretty cool really and I know the Holy Spirit's working in them because it is coming at a time that really blesses my heart at the same time um, and I get sweet stories every day, y'all. I get stories through YouTube. I get stories through email from our website. I get lots and lots of sweet stories that where people are encouraged by either my Bible studies or um, the cooking show, and they've started cooking or they've learned how to do something. And um, I, I, I do hear a lot of encouraging stories, and one of them is one I really need to read to y'all. I might could do that over the weekend or something, because it's really cool. But um, anyway, with that said, let's read our Bible study. I could talk all night. Y'all know how I am. And Chris has got to where he watches the Braves, and they are in number, they're like at the top of the charts, 
And used to, I could go in there and say, honey, let's watch TV. And he would pause it or he would just record it and watch it the next day. But now they've gotten so good and it's toward the end of the season and they're playing the Phillies. And he's like, he's not going to give up his baseball. So I could just talk forever. Um, and that's just the way it is. And I'm surely loving my study room, y'all. I laid in Mama's bed and it's amazing. Um, I'll show you how it works in a minute just because we got time. I can clip it out before I put it on YouTube. It says the helper. And now this is Charles Stanley and he says, you need help. We all do. This is not a sign of weakness. It is a spiritual reality. And it is why God has given the Holy Spirit to indwell in us. In fact, telling us about his provision was Jesus' way of informing us of one of the most profound truths concerning the Christian life. It is impossible. Excuse me. It says the life Jesus expects from his followers is unattainable apart from his intervention. This is good news for you today. God does not expect you to face what is before you on your own. He knows it is unfeasible in your strength, so he sends his Holy Spirit to do his work in you, empowering you, conforming you to the image of Christ, and guiding you in your daily life. So what should you do? Be aware of his presence and activity, how he convicts you of sin, prompts you to act, and enables you supernaturally with wisdom, energy, and talent you don't have within yourself. When you know what to look for, you will be amazed at how the real, when you know what to look for, you'll be amazed at how the real Holy Spirit will become to you. So accept the help that has been given you and rejoice that the one who accompanies you can handle anything. And then he says, Jesus, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Empower me to do your will. Amen. My hope is in Jesus because he gives me all the help I need. And I will say, um, my, I've had something just in the past week that, that I've found out about, and it's personal. Um, and it's not something that I can really control. And I will say that, not me personal, personal, but someone close in my family. And I will say that um, lots of times we get all bent out of shape and we try to fix things. And I'm a fixer if there ever was one. I'm more of a fixer, which is more like a man than a woman. Usually, you know, if a woman tries to tell a man that she needs this or that, he just tries to fix stuff. Um, and, and that's kind of how I am. So I'm the kind of friend that if you tell me about your problems, I don't really want to hear about your problems. I, I don't mind listening to them as long as you don't mind fixing them. But if you're not going to fix them and all you want to do is talk, then I I can't hardly go there because then I then I suffer with you and I don't like that. Um, so anyway, I got to thinking about this and you want to take control and you want to do everything on your own and you want to fix things. And some things we just cannot fix. We could, we could uh, preach Till the, till the world ended, and it wouldn't do us any good when someone is not um, in God's will or following God's will in their life. Um, lots of times we try to tell them, and we have to do it in a nice way, But and then sometimes um, you just can't do anything. So the, the smartest thing you can do is give it to God, let God take care of it and just tell him, look, you know, I am not capable of fixing this. And only you can handle the situation. So I'm giving it to you. Because when you do that, then you release yourself of the guilt and of the responsibility if it's something you truly cannot control. Now, if it's something you need to fix yourself, that's different. But you know, you know what I'm saying. So don't harp on somebody and don't drill somebody. Um, talk to them, you know, gently every once in a while and then just give it to God. And just keep praying and don't give up. Um, so remember that, y'all. Uh, 
I, I came to that point a few, uh, well, well, it's been less than a week ago over something in my life. So, and I sure feel better since I told God that he could have it because, I mean, for about three or four days, I had a really hard time and then I finally just gave up and that's what we have to do. If you've never been saved, if you don't know what salvation is, there's a, there's a part of you that hasn't given up and surrendered. There's a part of you on the inside that feels like that you can control your destination or something that you can do or something you can say might get you to heaven, but there's really not. And um, there's only one way to heaven and that's through God's Son, Jesus Christ. And if you feel like or you cannot remember a day that you were saved where you truly know no matter what, that if you died, you were absolutely going to be in heaven. If you cannot say that and you cannot feel that in your heart, then please look up on Real Southern Woman How to Be Saved and watch my video. And if I tell you to read something, read it because there's nothing more important in this whole wide world, not even your own children, as important as being saved. Okay, so that you can live eternally in heaven with Jesus Christ and the God of this universe, the God that created everything here and even created my little Katie did. You know, just go outside and listen to them singing or, or listen to the little video that I have posted on here about the Katie dids. They're so loud this time of year and they're just... They're green, y'all. They're really green at first, I think. I think on that video, I need, I should have went and watched it before I even brought her out to y'all, but I didn't. Um, but I'm sure there's a difference in the male and female. There's a difference in the way they communicate, just like we're different. We're definitely different as male and female, and we're definitely different as how we communicate. And, um, and a lot of the animals and even insects do the same thing. Um... I'm going to show y'all how my bed works, just because it's fun. But I guess I'll do my uh, prayer first. And then I'm going to show you how the bed works. And I'm going to show you my little um, snake in here because he has eaten. And I think I can pick him up and let y'all take a look at him. His name is um, Thor. Okay. So anyway, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for... The rain we had today and your beautiful and wonderful world that you have made for us, even all the way down to the insects and the shimmering of their wings and how we should pay attention to your creation and we should worship you, of course, the creator more than the creation. But as we look at these things that you have created, it does give us more of an idea of how big you really are and how smart and intelligent and unbelievable uh, it is that you could even create the things that you have. And because of that, that's all the more reason we should trust you. We should trust you with our life. We should trust you with our salvation and we should trust you with our problems. Help each and every one of us that are watching tonight and in the days to come. And I pray that you would bless each and every, all of us who want to make you a part of our life and learn more about you. Now go with us as um, we sleep tonight. And may we rest well and wake up to a wonderful day tomorrow. And if not, then maybe you'll take us home. Um, and that would be fine too with me. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm going to show you this cool bed. I had to show my friend. She came over today, and she said, I want to see your prayer room. And I said, okay, but it's not it's not as clean as it was because I've been laying on the bed. And she said, oh, I don't care. So let me show you all this bed. And, I mean, y'all see Mama. Y'all are not going to believe today. I made Mama's famous. This is the coolest bed. I made Mama's famous sponge cake. She got three ribbons at county fairs for it, and I made it today. Let me take it down to flat. I made it today, and I found a video of Mama, y'all, telling me how to make that cake. How exciting is that? 
She's actually laying in this bed when she does it. So look, it goes all the way flat. Then you can press a button for lounge and it'll fold you all the way up. So like when I'm reading my Bible and stuff, um, I should put this on my links because I actually bought Mama this on Amazon, believe it or not. I bought her the mattress and I bought her the bed on Amazon. It's a 12 inch like thick memory foam ma mattress. But look, isn't it cool? It'll raise up my legs like if you've got, um, you know, like if you've got swelling or whatever. Um, you can keep your legs elevated. You can keep your back elevated. I just love it. But you can sit here and, and, and read. Put a pillow right here and put your book on it. And it's just perfect. The base to this bed costs, I want to say, around $780. And then the mattress was a different price. And I don't remember how much the mattress was. But I just wanted y'all to see how much fun I'm having in my prayer room. And you know what I do after I um, after I read my books, then I fall asleep just like this. It's the best ever. Now I'm gonna get Thor out. Let y'all see him. I should have put the bed down. But anyway, we have these memory foam mattresses. I had gotten Mama one. I have gotten my younger daughter one we have one in our bedroom we have one at the beach and they're absolutely dreamy and they're not that expensive nothing like the Tempur-Pedics are and they have just been a blessing to my whole family and every time my best friend goes down to the beach she's like oh I just love your bed and so they're very reasonably priced so maybe I will put them on my um links I need to make some um everyday links of things we use all right, let me grab him. Now, y'all haven't seen May's side of the room. It's quite looking like a teenager. Do you see the difference from one side to the other? But you know that's part of it. Um, so I just kind of stay on my side, and then this is her side, and this is where she does her crafts and her paintings and her, you know, journaling and all that stuff. And let's see if we can find Thor. Thor. Where are you? He is probably, oh, there he is. Where are you at, boy? It's hard to get him, y'all. Let's let y'all see my four. This is a, about as big as he will ever get. Um, he is about, I would say, what, two feet or so? Um, the, the, the females get to be about three feet, but the males only get to be about two feet, I think. And so, um, that's him. He is called a sand boa. So, um, I guess y'all can see him. He's a sand boa. So, anyway, um, I told y'all that they don't bother me, and they really don't. Thor, can you say hello to the camera? Say hello to the camera, Thor. Y'all probably think I'm crazy. There he is. He don't even have legs. Why are people so scared of snakes? I don't understand. So anyway, we'll put him up in his little house. Now, the problem that I had with him, this is the problem that I have with Thor. And that is, Thor will live to be 30 years old. 30 years old. Who wants to take care of a snake for 30 years? I don't. So Maya's going to college, and we're left with Thor. He eats live mice. The good thing about him, when she got him, I said, don't you even think about getting one of those real big snakes because you have to feed them those big rats. And I'm not doing that. 
So I told her, I said, if you get one, you can't get one that gets hardly, I don't want it to get over three feet, period. And so she got him, and he'll probably get bigger around, but he's probably as long as he'll ever be. So I can handle feeding him a little mouse, although it is kind of sad, but um, I could probably do it. Now, the other snake that we had was a rosy boa, and she died because the pet store sold us mice with E. coli. They were frozen mice. She ate frozen mice. She would take them out of a package. You would warm them up under some warm water, and then you would dangle them, but they were dead, and she would eat them. Well, they had E. coli in them, and so she died. A $99 snake dead, and she was a really pretty snake, prettier than Thor. But anyway, she was real orange, and um, so we decided this time we were feeding live because then we wouldn't have to worry about feeding him something that was going to kill him. So the live mice all come from the same place May got them, and we don't have to worry about them being bad. Anyway, um, I think right now he eats fuzzies. So they're, my dogs are barking, but, so they're, they're not very big. But I had a video, I think it might be on Real Southern Woman too, when we go in there where we got him, how many different um, reptiles are in there. They have some really, really cool lizards and bugs that they feed on and just gross stuff and really cool fish too. So anyway, I know. I just like stuff like that. Um, but I guess I may um, keep it while she's gone. I have to decide if I'm going to or not because she had a friend that might do it, but I'm not sure if he's going to get to. But, yeah, they don't bother me. Now, if poisonous snakes, yeah, I don't want anything to do with them. But um, the other snakes don't bother me at all. He's not poisonous. Uh, and he's really docile, really. The, the snakes that you can buy, lots of the snakes that you can buy for pets, like the rosy boa, she's like the most docile snake there is. So you don't ever have to worry about them biting you. And their teeth are so doggone little. If they bit you, it wouldn't hurt. But anyway, um... I hope y'all have a blessed day. I don't know if y'all got to see fireworks or not last night. But I know one thing. I had to burrito wrap my dog. I don't know if y'all burrito wrap your dogs or if y'all have one of those lightning vests. But I just take a blanket and put it into a square just like I did my babies when they were born. And I take the corner and I put it in between Happy's legs. And then I take the side and I wrap it as tight as I can. And then I wrap the other side over her and I hold her like a burrito. And do you know what she really, it does make her feel better. So um, that's a pretty cool little trick if you don't want to spend $40 on one of those vests. Just wrap them like you do a baby if you can remember how you did it. Or um, surely if you haven't had one, somebody in your family's had one. It's so funny because... Um, when people first have their babies and you tell them to wrap them tight, they're scared to wrap them. And you're like, if you would just wrap that baby up tight as you could wrap it, it would be so much more content and sleep through the night. You just have no idea. Neither one of my kids, I am not kidding y'all. When I had my babies, they were in their own bed within a week. I'm not exaggerating. I did not sleep with my kids. They were content, they were happy in their own bed. They started sleeping all night so fast, nobody could believe it. But I let them, you know, have their own space. And even when they were sick and little, they never come and got in the bed with me um, because they were very happy in their own bed. I loved it. And it's much better on the relationship with the spouse, too, I have to say. Um, I think. And I'm sure glad I've done it now since I got breast cancer at 40 and had both my breasts taken off. So I only had a few good years with my husband. Real good years. Anyway, y'all have a blessed day. And we will talk to y'all tomorrow. I made a sponge cake today. I made a buttermilk pie today. And we are not going to do that keto diet is for the birds, but we are doing the USDA regulation diet and the sponge cake is fine to eat. I can't eat much of that buttermilk pie, but um, we lost, I lost 20 pounds before we went to LA last fall. Chris lost 30 and we did it pretty quick. 
just eating the food groups. You do not have to give up your carbs. You do not have to give up anything. You can still have your fruit. You just have to do it in moderation, and that's what we're doing. So um, if you want to know how much a woman over 50 is supposed to get, um, I believe you get one and a half cups of fruit, two cups of vegetables, five ounces of grains. Three of those have to be whole grains. Five ounces of meat, protein. And have I missed something? I did vegetables, fruits, protein. Oh, milks. You get, um, I forget how many ounces of milk, but you get so many servings of milk. And I want to say it's five. Uh, so you can have a yogurt, you can have milk with your breakfast, but you got to eat brand cereal and not eat the junky kind. And you got, but I mean, it makes a huge difference. If you go get a snack, you get an apple. If you go, you know, you don't eat, and the sponge cake that I made today is very, very, very low. It's not like eating cake cake. So, because you don't have the heavy icing and, um, it's not got a whole lot of sugar in it. So, but uh, me and Chris will lose weight, watch and see, and we won't be giving up nothing, so I can actually have a cooking show. I was thinking when I started doing those keto recipes, oh my gosh, for one, I've done three, and I need to put them on video, but they're so nasty, and I got heartburn so bad, and they really weren't tasty to me. Now, to some people, they might like it, but not me. I'm used to eating good food, so, um, me and, ha me and when Amy came in here and said she wanted to change up, me and Chris were so happy. We're like, yes. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're going to uh, be on Family Food Fight this Thursday too. But I'll see y'all Monday night. Love you. Thanks for tuning in. I talked a lot, but the Braves is on. I love you. I got to fix this phone. <laughs>